Hi, we're Pastors Jerry and Julie Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles. And this whole TV series is about the truth about addiction. So we're going to pick up last week, we were talking about 32 years in counting, ministering to people with a lost and dying world. Uh, so we're going to pick up where we left off on that series last week. And we were talking about it is in the last days, perilous times will come. And so 2 Timothy, the third chapter, or yeah, third chapter, one through five, I want to pick up where we left off. It says this, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unloving, unholy, unthankful, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, benign, benign, denying its power. Excuse me. This is the face of addiction. This is what Julie and I work with every day as we work with people with addiction. This describes exactly what addiction does to a person. And so we're going to pick up from there and we're going to talk a little bit more about the face of addiction and where it talks about perilous times will come. Perilous times, the word perilous, the Greek word per, for perilous is ragingly insane. And this is the world we're living in today where people are ragingly insane. We're going to jump ahead and I'm going to have Julie read to you. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4 tells us exactly where we're on in God's time clock today. So, Julie, would you read that for us? Sure. Um, this is the word of the Lord, 2 Thessalonians mm -hmm. 2, 3 through 4. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And he, goes, and he goes on to say, Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Okay, and then I want to go to second, or 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, and we're talking about the time we're living in today. This describes it exactly to a T. It says this, Now the Spirit expressively says, that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their own consciences seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. Now, let's look at some of the, these things that's going on in our society today to see exactly where we are. How does this line up? What's going on in our society today? How does it line up with Scripture? Well, let's look at a couple of things. At this point, we look at some of the facts which are going on in America right now. And we're going back to ragingly insane, where it talked about the Greek word for ragingly insane means absolutely, uh, or the Greek word for perilous means ragingly insane. So today we're looking at violent crimes within the last year. On February... 22nd, 2019, Riverside, California. When well, this is a guy's name, Turpin and his wife, Lois, who shackled some of their 13 children to beds and starved them and pleaded guilty Friday for abuse. They chained their 13 children to bed and starved them to death. Is that ragingly insane or not? I would say that's ragingly insane. So when it says in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be ragingly insane, that's exactly where we are. Here's another thing it says. A man is charged with murdering his brother, sister-in-law, and their two children in New Jersey mansion murder. On that, This was February 25th, 2019. This is just a few months ago. This, game, this guy was charged with murdering his brother, his sister-in-law, and their two children in a mansion. That's in incredible. How about this? A Pens Pennsylvania woman and her teen daughter 
are charged with killing five members of their own family. And then there's a manhunt right now. I think they finally caught him, though, for a convicted Georgia attorney who killed his own mother. That, to me, is ragingly insane. How anyone could kill their own mother, I don't care what their mother did to them. You know, the Bible says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long. I'd say this guy's days aren't going to be very long. Right now, over 41 million abortions are estimated in 2018 in the world. We in the world today have killed over 41 million children and never even gave them a, land, a chance to live. Is this ragingly insane or is this ragingly insane? And this is what it talks about. Just before Jesus Christ is going to return, in my whole lifetime, I've never seen the things going on then that are going on today. Yes, back when they said there, hey, had the book come out, 88 Reasons Why Jesus Christ is going to return today, we didn't have these things going on. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 was talking about the great falling away. Well, fewer than one in four Americans, that's 24%, believe the Bible is the inherent word of God and take it literally. Now think of this. Only 24% of Americans today believe the Bible is the word of God and take it literally. That means we're living in a country today where 76% of Americans do not believe the Word of God. Think of that. 76% of Americans don't even believe the Word of God. Is this a great falling away? I would think so. How about this statement? And these are all facts that we've got off of our fact sheets. 81% of pastors have been tempted to have inappropriate sex or thoughts of behavior. Sexual thoughts of behavior. 81%. How about this one? 7,000 churches are closing a year. Is this a great falling away? 7,000 churches are closing a year. Over 1,500 pastors left the ministry every month last year. We're losing 1,500 pastors every month last year. Is that a great falling away? Over 3,500 people a day leave, left the church last year. This is the great falling away talked about in Thessalonians. Now think about this for a minute. We're talking about just in America alone. Over 3,500 people a day are leaving, left the church last year. Well, if 3,500 people left the church last year, that's probably more this year. That tells me that this is a great falling away, which was prophesied in Thessalonians. Prophecy.com reports February 15th 2019, 2019, Pope Francis and the leading Muslim priest signed a covenant pushing the one world religion. Did you hear what I said? Pope Francis, this is documented, and the leading Muslim priest just signed a covenant pushing the one world religion. This is setting the stage for the one world religion called Chrislam. They've been working on it for years. This is the first major step they've ever made to putting it into existence. This one world religion is described thoroughly in Revelations 13, 8 which will happen after the rapture of the church. The one world religion will take place after the rapture of the church. The question is, are we ready? Am I ready? Are you ready? That's the question. By the way, 
Are you ready? Let me answer that. You can be ready or maybe not ready by sitting in church every Sunday morning. Just because you're in church every Sunday morning doesn't mean you're ready. Just because you've read the Bible once or twice or picked up the Bible and maybe you even have it somewhere with dust on your coffee table doesn't mean you're ready. The facts of all this that I've learned is we must die to live. What does that mean? I must physically die to live? That's crazy. I must spiritually die to live for Christ. I must die to my selfish, sinful nature to live for Christ. Jesus said this, John 12, 24. Now this is Jesus Christ himself speaking. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. John 21, 15, Jesus asked Peter this question. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? My question for you today is this. I don't care if you've been in church every day of your life. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Someday, whether that rapture happens today or tomorrow, someday we're going to step into eternity. Whether it be at the rapture or whether it be from our normal death. When we step into eternity, we're going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. This is a very serious subject that we need to take into consideration. Every day I'm asking myself, do I love him more than these? Do I love him more than the people, places, and things in my life? Do I love him more than my spouse? Do you love him more than your children? Do you love him more than your career? Do you love him more than your home? Do you love him more than your car? Do you love him more than who you are in society? You see, Jesus said, you must die to yourself to live for me. Exodus 20, verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. And I'm sorry to say today, many people's gods are their career, or their house, or their children. You know, yes, we're supposed to love our children. We're supposed to love our spouse. But the number one love in our life has to be Jesus Christ. Just like he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? So I ask you today, the question I ask you today, do you love him more than the people, places, and things in your life? If you do, praise God. If you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, praise God. But share that with others, what Jesus Christ has done in your life. If you all of a sudden take inventory of your life and you realize, well, maybe, maybe I don't love him more than these. Maybe I don't love him more than my finances. Maybe I don't love him more than my career. Maybe I don't love him more than my spouse or my children. Then it's time to take inventory. And it's time that we maybe have to die to our selfish sinful nature. Maybe there's some addiction that I love more than him that I'm just having trouble giving up. Well, I have to give that up to live for him. So today I encourage you, just die to your selfish sinful nature and live for him.